Today we're going to talk about whether Jesus' miracles actually happened as they're recorded in the New Testament. We're going to look at whether the miracles of Jesus are truth or myth. Firstly, it's important we don't approach the subject with the assumption that unexplained events can't occur. We shouldn't allow our personal prejudice to get in the way of an objective analysis of what the Bible says. There were individuals in Jesus' day who it seems claimed special powers of healing. One example we can find in Matthew 12 verses 24 to 28 where Jesus is accused uh, of using false gods as the basis for his miracles. The Jewish leaders were trying to discredit him. And he reminds his critics that their disciples uh, attempted to cast out devils. So we shouldn't be surprised to find accounts of Jesus performing miracles, nor should we be surprised when we move on into later part of the New Testament, shortly after Jesus' resurrection, that Jesus' apostles are also performing miracles by special powers. So we might question, why am I using the Bible to examine the miracles attributed to Jesus? Surely that's the document that's in question. Well, I respond by saying, well, it's that very book, it's those very documents that the critics of the Bible use to try and discredit the record of the miracles of Jesus. So we want to just objectively analyze what the Bible says and how it records the events. So the first point I want to make is to ask a question. Do we have to understand the mechanism of an event before we can believe that that event is true? I suspect most of us can't explain how a motor car engine works in all its detail. But we still believe that it works. We'll ride the car and just start it and assume it will continue. Likewise, we probably don't understand how a jet engine works in an aeroplane, but we're willing to fly because we see the evidence. We see aeroplanes flying. So we have to acknowledge that even if we can't explain how Jesus performed miracles, we don't have to have a reason, a, a, a reason for denying those miracles. That's a really important point. The fact that we can't explain something doesn't mean it's not true. So returning to the whole question of whether the records are recording a myth or actual events, we have records available. It's the gospel records and the Acts of the Apostles. But can we accept that the gospel records are reliable, that they're accurate? Remember, we can't use our own prejudice to undermine acceptance of the gospel records. Unless they've been shown to be faulty, or just imagination of the writers, we've got to accept them as accurate. You see, they could have been refuted at the time by Jesus' critics, the Jewish leaders who wanted him dead. But there's no manuscript evidence, no documentary evidence from the time of Jesus or shortly after that shows individuals try to discredit what Jesus and the apostles did. So this brings us to the gospel records themselves. Many of the miracles are described in great detail. We're told of where they took place. They're recorded as having been seen by many, sometimes by Jesus' critics, who, when the gospel records were produced early in the first century, could have just discredited them, saying it didn't happen. But there's no evidence of that happening. Now, some critics of the Bible might say that the gospel records differ in the way that some miracles are recorded. You see, 
Many of the miracles are recorded in more than one gospel, and there are variations in the record between those miracles. But is that a problem? Does it question the reliability of the records? I would say consider a news item reported in newspapers. The event took place, but different news outlets might use different words to describe what took place. They don't contradict each other, but they present different aspects. That doesn't mean that the event didn't happen. It just highlights that from a different perspective, things are recorded. So variations don't necessarily indicate inaccuracy. With respect to the Gospels, actually, each inspired writer has his own themes, we might call it, which explain the variation between the Gospels. Now, returning to the miracles themselves, a number of the miracles recorded give locations and have much detail and indicate that many were present that saw the event. As I've mentioned already, some of the record details actually involve the very Jewish leaders who arranged Jesus' death. Consider one such miracle in John 9. You might read it for yourself. It's about a man who was born blind. The details that are recorded in John 9 show us that Jesus gave the blind man instruction as to what he should do, which he followed, and he returned seeing. He, he was challenged by the Jewish leaders, to whom he explained that Jesus had given him sight. There's then a debate between the Jewish leaders and the man and his parents as to what had happened. It was observed by uh, some that, well, a notable miracle has been performed, but we can't explain it. It leaves the leaders perplexed. Jesus meets up with his leaders again a little bit later and reproves them for their blindness, for their unwillingness to accept that Jesus cured the man. Such a detailed account, when it was made available in John's Gospel, could have been refuted by the very critics of Jesus. John's Gospel was available very early on in the first century and could have been read by those very individuals that are spoken of in the account of the miracle. But there's no record of anybody trying to refute that or any other miracle. The most likely explanation is that the miracle happened exactly as it's recorded. I'll take another miracle. Again, in John chapter 11, this time, it's the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Thinking about the details, it took place in Bethany, a town only a short distance from Jerusalem. And Lazarus had been dead for four days before Jesus raised him from the dead. And it seems that Lazarus was quite well known, both to uh, the Jewish leaders and people in the town of Bethany. And it's recorded that many people saw Lazarus after he'd been raised from the dead, including some of the Jewish leaders. <clears throat> it's an incredible event, like the man who was born blind. Both took place only a short while before Jesus was raised from the dead. As I said already, no record of any accusation that Jesus was a fraud, that somehow he had tricked people into thinking he performed the miracle. As we move on into the New Testament, and in particular the Acts of the Apostles, which records events that took place shortly after Jesus was raised from the dead, we find evidence of individuals who claim they could perform miracles. One such individual is recorded in Acts chapter 8. It's a man who had performed some sort of miracles, but he accepted Jesus as saviour. And not surprisingly, he spent time with Peter, the Apostle Peter, and saw him performing miracles. And he realised what Peter was doing was very different from what he had been able to do. 
so different in fact he tried to bribe peter to give him the power to perform those miracles a clear indication that they were different from anything that men could do again something that could have been refuted at the time but isn't but there's a bigger miracle than all of that it was one done by god of course jesus miracles were performed because god gave jesus the power to perform those miracles but that miracle is the resurrection of jesus and again there's no evidence of that miracle being refuted even though his critics would have loved to be able to show that it was all a fraud so if you're still skeptical or unbelieving on what basis we ask the facts speak for themselves only prejudice will continue to cause unbelief thank you for listening mm -hmm.